do it. Hi, my rice roaches and ethanols. How you doing? That's really impressive. Whoa, whoa, just whoa, bravo, wow. Are you a good kisser? Just stop. Just stop it. Stop. No. Yeah, welcome to my video part two. So today I'm going to ask about his wedding. I mean, he did a marriage recently and also about my personal questions and questions from my subscribers. So I hope you guys will enjoy. Let's go. And can I ask about wedding now? Of course, yeah. yeah and many people are asking about, about wedding. Why did you marry a cardboard, not real one? Well, obviously, I couldn't marry the real one because I, you know, I haven't met him yet. But I wish I could. That would be my absolute dream because Jim would be the perfect husband. But you know, as I couldn't marry the real Jimin, I was in Las Vegas. I was, you know, always wanted to get married in Vegas with an Elvis. And Jimin is the love of my life. I've never loved anyone more than Jimin. And obviously, I've had my cardboard cutout for a few years. I've actually got a few different cardboard cutouts. You know, I've got some in London. I've got some in Las Vegas. I've got some in LA. Like all over the place. Um, but, you know, Jimin is the love of my life. I was in Vegas. I thought, I've always wanted to get married. You know, I, I've never had good relationships with people. I always get cheated on. So I thought, Jimin is going to, you know, love me, loyal. And I just got married to him. And I was, you know, it was an amazing day. My best friend, Frenchie Morgan, was there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and she was very supportive. I had some other friends there as well. And it was just a very special day. So, no, I haven't been able to marry the real Jimin yet. But, you know, at least I have my cardboard Jimin. Okay, happy to hear that. And... Are you a good kisser? Uh, I saw that you are you were kissing uh, that cardboard, right? Are you a good kisser? <laughs> well, just ask my gym in. Like he seemed to think. I mean, you obviously you saw the kiss on Daily Mail. Um, mm -hmm. It was a very nice kiss. <laughs> okay, I understand. And yeah, this is like a, my also my personal questions. <laughs> like I saw that your best friend is French Morgan, right? Yeah. But I, yeah. I I think like a, she's your girlfriend, or is is she just a friend or a girlfriend also? Uh, well basically we're, we're best friends but we're also like a couple as well it's kind of a very complicated relationship mm -hmm. so we're best friends we're literally we think the same we have the same mind like everything we do is literally the same we're both obsessed with bts both obsessed with jimin and k-pop we went to korea together so she is my girlfriend as well but we mm -hmm. have a very complicated relationship because she's obsessed with jimin she likes korean guys so we have kind of an open relationship, but a very mm -hmm. complicated because obviously I married my in Kabul cut out. So yeah, very complicated relationship. Can I just ask that? Uh, is she, does she feel jealous about your relationship between Jimin, or she doesn't? Yeah, so Frenchie, she does kind of feel jealous, but again, she loves him as well. But we're always fighting over the cardboard Jimin. You know, mm -hmm. we've got we've got one in Las Vegas in the house we share and. Uh, you know, and we do fight over him like sometimes I have him in the bed sometimes she wants him in the bed so we do fight over that but then you know she she likes Korean guys so she she you know she sometimes sees Korean guys and you know that upsets me sometimes but you know it makes her happy so I just want her to be happy so yes yeah, it's, it's it does cause a bit of tension sometimes but she was very supportive on the wedding day you know she came mm -hmm. she came with me she was made um she she obviously she she wanted to marry Jimin as well but uh, you know I beat her to it um, so she can't have him now, but um, yeah, she she she's very understanding. Okay, and yeah, I saw that that uh, oh, while on your wedding, that a uh, bright man said like a uh, you're gonna have like a jiggy jiggy time with Jimin. <laughs> no, he was basically he was um, the the Elvis guy. He was mm -hmm. basically reciting a lyric from Elvis. Oh, okay. So he was like a hunk which is basically a lyric from one of Elvis's songs. You know, that's how Elvis used to talk. So he was just basically. Obviously, in it's Vegas. So in Vegas, the a lot of the wedding chapels they have uh, people dressed as Elvis, mm -hmm. and what they do instead of having like the traditional wedding script, you know, do you take this to be your awful lady bride, whatever they say, like they actually change it so they add a lot of Elvis words in that Elvis would say or lyrics and stuff. So that was the meaning behind that. Ah, okay, <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, we just fin uh, finished our basic questions. So can I just ask about my personal and uh, from our su subscribers? Is okay? Yeah, of course. Go okay. for it. And what does what describes you in three words? Uh, it describes me? Yeah. Like, a, you, can you describe uh, yourself in three words? Yeah. Um, let me think. Uh, I don't know. Hang on. Let me think. Yeah, no describe worries. Um, fun, friendly, and Jimin. Oh, fun, friendly, Jimin. <laughs> okay, I got it. And 
Yeah, this one is from subscriber. Uh, she's asking that, are you just trolling at this point, or are you serious about this one? About, like, in general. Like, uh, like I've never trolled anyone in my life. Like, mm -hmm. I don't believe in trolling. I think it's a very bad thing, so I would never troll anyone. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really know what that means, but I would never troll anyone. I'm, you know, I'm serious. I used to live in Korea, so I have such uh, a strong knowledge of Korean culture. I have so much respect for Korean people. I have lots of Korean friends around the world. You know, I have a Korean coach. So, you know, I, I'm very respectful of the Korean culture. And, but, you know, I spend a lot of time there. People think, why the hell does he want to be, you know, K-pop? Why does he want to look like Jimin? Well, I've actually lived in that country. I've actually, you know, learned a lot about that country. So, you know, I don't believe in trolling. I think it's a very bad thing. Okay. Thank you so much. And are you happy with your achievement? Um, like, I'm very, very happy now when I had my previous surgeries last year in Korea, which was my uh, revision rhinoplasty, tiplasty, cheekbone reduction, jawbone reduction, mm -hmm. and uh, cheek, uh, what's it, chin, um, chin reduction and chin shaving. Like, I felt so good. Like, I feel so good now. I'm very happy. But there's still more I need to do. So I've always, you know, I've always got things I need to do. Okay. And how's your Korean language learning going? Well, it's, it's going well, but I have a very bad memory. So, like, every time I have a Korean class, which I have every single week, mm -hmm. um, I have Korean class, uh, you know, every week I have a uh, Hanguk Song Sine in London, and my memory is so bad. Like, if I read a book, I forget everything. Like, that's the same with Korean, because it's quite hard to learn a different language. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. I've never been good at languages. I used to be quite good at French. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning. And, but the best, best way for me to learn is when I'm in Korea, like I was there last year, I pick it up so quickly when I'm with my Korean friends um, or business partners over there. Like, you know, I pick it up very quickly when I'm with them, you know, when I'm going to a restaurant, when I'm going to a shop, asking people things. So that's where I pick it up. And when I'm hanging out with my Korean friends in London or LA, that's when I pick it up. When I have like a Korean lesson, I can't remember anything because I like the grammar just confuses me. So I need to just be communicating with people. So that's that for me is the best way to learn. So, you know, it's coming along, but I do need to live in Korea again. I need to move there and then I'll become fluent. Okay, understandable. And yeah, how, wait, okay. Yeah, and this one is, this one is my personal questions. Like how do you can handle all of those haters and like black, like you know blacklash online like you know talk about gossip about you and comments bad things about you yourself right well of course you know everyone unfortunately gets trolls these days and it's it's terrible like not just celebrities not just k-pop stars but you know normal people i'm sure we've all experienced uh, trolling in different mm -hmm. ways and it's very very horrible you know everyone gets trolled and it's just not a nice feeling you know especially if you're a young person if you're a young person you upload a picture and someone calls you ugly someone says something bad about you you know that can have such a, a strong psychological effect on you mm -hmm. luckily i'm very skinned i've got experience i'm older I, I don't care what people think but you know i just i just feel like trolling is totally out of control and it has such an impact on young people in particular and also you know older people as well can really affect people and obviously we've seen you know Guhara and uh, Suli uh, that took their own lives you know particularly in Suli's case because of online trolling you know and these people you know you, you don't have to do anything wrong to upset people these days so these trolls they're very unhappy with themselves and they just like to target people that they're jealous of or you know just people that they they don't agree with and I think it's fantastic for people to have different opinions you know mm -hmm. it's great if people think you know you know sure someone might not agree with me someone might disagree with me i think that's fantastic talk all you want but you know when it gets very personal like say you deserve to die i'm going to shoot you if you ever come to my country uh, you're disgusting you're ugly you know when it comes to kind of comments like that it's really out of order and luckily as i say i'm a very tough strong thick-skinned person mm -hmm. but i just you know i just imagine if a young you know a young person like a child or a teenager was to receive these comments it would really really affect them and I think something needs to be done about it. You know, I don't believe it's it's good for people to be, you know, on social media all the time. It can have very negative impacts and I uh, think something needs to be done, you know, because all of the trolls online, they don't have a face picture. They have a picture of someone else. So the people that troll me, you know, they have a picture of a K-pop idol, have a fake name. So you have no trace of who they are, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah. You know, they don't id checks and i don't i don't think it's good for young people to be on social media i think there should be an age restriction i think you know i'm i'm not i'm not a uh 
proponent or advocate for government censorship but i do think something needs to be done to almost have like an id check mm -hmm. so someone has to be over a certain age limit and you know to prove who it is so then if someone does send a death threat online it should be traceable so obviously there are ways uh, ip addresses can be traced through you know law enforcement and stuff but you know these trolls feel protected they feel protected because they've got a fake picture a fake profile and you know they feel they can do that to people and like i said for me I get it all the time. Like, the, if you saw the comments I got every day, Ethan, they're really, really horrible. And I've never done anything to offend people. I've never done anything to hurt people. You know, I'm just living my life. I'm happy. You know, I'm, I'm promoting K-pop, promoting BTS, promoting anything to do with Korea. Because um, a lot of people say, oh, you bring shame to BTS, you bring shame to K-pop, you bring shame to Korea. What I, I'm actually doing, if you actually look at mainstream media, very few, obviously, BTS have made a huge difference with that. You know, there's there's a lot of mainstream media that don't even talk about K-pop. You know, when they when they uh, talk about K-pop idols, they use the wrong picture of them, which has happened even with news articles about me. Um, you know, they they don't talk about K-pop, they don't talk about Korean culture, they don't talk about BTS. And now it's getting better because BTS have really paved the way for that. But you know, what I'm doing is kind of helping um, you know promote BTS to new audiences because there's a lot of media out there that do not ever cover K-pop. Um, so what I'm doing is helping BTS, you know, get their message across. And sure, people sometimes think I'm crazy or whatever, but at the end of the day, people are learning about K-pop, BTS, Korean culture through me. They're going to Google it. Okay, wow, this is addictive, and then I fall in love with BTS. So you know, people might not agree with me, but you know, that's just just how it works. Yeah, true. And yeah, to be honest, I've like I feel respect about you in this case because you know that I'm not native English speaker. So of course, I I have. Tons of grammar mistakes and, you know, tons of mistakes about talking in English. But, yeah, whenever, you know, um, most of my most of my comments on my channel is positive. But whenever I see, like, oh, your English sucks, you have tons of mi grammar mistakes, I feel like that's why, like, uh, sometimes I feel afraid to record my video because I'm afraid about those really? kind of comments. Yeah, sometimes. And well, what Ethan, you should you should never ever take notice of these people you know they're just hating for no reason you your english is fantastic but even if your english wasn't fantastic you know nobody should be hating on you at the end of the day you're speaking a foreign language mm -hmm. you speak korean portuguese english that's such a huge talent you know very few people can speak multiple languages for me i find it incredibly difficult to learn another language so the fact that your english is fluent but just say your english wasn't fluent you're still making the effort you know mm -hmm. that's very respectable so you know shame on those people that have said that to you okay thank you so much appreciate that and bury me a moment oh yeah and where do you get all of your motivations um so a lot of my motivation i get through bts and watching k-pop shows you know i like to watch all the k-pop countdowns i like to watch the k-pop charts and uh, that just inspires me it makes me um you know happy to see you know all the k-pop stars and stuff and it inspires me with my music inspires me with my fashion so when i watch bts music videos or tv shows with them uh, i also like the korean show running man that's very fun so it just inspires me and um i don't really watch much tv but i do like to watch yeah all the k-dramas and um all the, I can't even understand sometimes what they're saying unless they have subtitles. But, you know, I still, I just enjoy it. It just makes me happy to see Korean people because all of their shows are so entertaining. Mm -hmm. Like all the sound effects they put, you know, they say cute things and stuff. It's just really entertaining. So that, that makes me happy. And, um, yeah, just listening to BTS every day. And I listen to so many different K-pop artists. I love NCT. Um, I love Wavy. I love... Uh, 2 p.m. Big Bang. Um, who else? I loved Kara as well. Um, Wonder Girls. You know, I, I listen to so much K-pop music, so that that really inspires me. Okay. And do you have any favorite Korean food or snack? Um. Well, for me, I'm vegan, but I do love Korean food. But it's quite difficult to find yeah. vegan Korean. Yeah, I agree. Um, very oddy oil. <laughs> But um, I like uh, I love kimchi fried rice. Mm -hmm. Um, I love bibimbap is nice. Uh, I love the Korean snacks, you know, the Korean crisps. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like when you go to like a 7-Eleven or a G-Mart in yeah. Korea, like I just love all the snacks. Oh my God. And I love soju. I love makgeolli. But um, yeah, it's quite hard in Korea because everything's got fish or meat in it. Like even the yeah. soups have got fish. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I normally, normally just stick to what I know. Like kimbap is quite nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have it with cucumber or avocado. 
Uh, so yeah, I normally just stick to kimchi fried rice. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm sorry, for, sorry to hear that because yeah, I had that kind of like experience also because some of my vegan friends had like struggle in Korea about foods because most of them include, you know, uh, fish or meat. So yeah, I think we need to improve this kind of things for you know for vegan people. I hope yeah, Korea will gonna yeah, improve I think about so. this kind of um, things. I hope so, because it's very hard, because even, you know, something which you think is vegetarian or mm-hmm. vegan, like when I was there, you go to a bakery and you, you just want a cheese pizza, you know, um, just say someone wants a cheese pizza, but it'll have ham in it, but it won't even say any ingredients. And like mm-hmm. a soup, you know, they put fish sauce in the soup. So it's very, very difficult. And of course, it's very difficult, uh, you know, in Korea, because they don't really understand, you know, what yeah. vegetarian is. Mm-hmm. Plain, you know, Chesik which means vegetarian but they they think vegetarian is just fish or or whatever so it's quite a difficult concept for them to uh grasp <laughs> yeah okay understandable and okay and if it, you, do you have any like a habit or favorite thing on your free time <laughs> um i don't actually have much free time so, oh, I'm so yeah. busy. <laughs> when i have free time i love to read history books i love to go to art galleries museums i love uh like I said, I love ancient Asian history, ancient Middle Eastern history, like Persian history, Egyptian history. Um, I love all that traveling. I love traveling. I've been to so many different countries. Um, so yeah, I don't have much free time. I wish I had more, but um, you know, I'm just always busy working on my music mm-hmm. um, and everything. But yeah, I just love to to read books and to travel. Okay, and any new new music for 2020? Yeah, well, I've actually got my album coming out this year, so I'm busy working on that. But I have a new song coming out, mm-hmm. you know, pretty soon, very soon, actually, next couple of months. Uh, okay. This one I'm working on very, very hard, you know, since the start of the year. It's going to be much, it's, it's a big improvement on all my other songs. Like, my singing ability has really improved. Um, the songwriting skills have really improved. So the song is really going to be amazing. The video is going to be amazing. So I've got that. I've already got um, two other songs that I'm working on as well. They're already complete. They're in the pipeline. And then, of course, I will have my album come out this year as well. So my music this year, you know, last year I loved my songs. I personally love my songs. Not everyone likes perfection. It's got 80,000 dislikes. People said too much autotune. But that was actually the concept of that video. It's Mm -hmm. about being like a perfect doll. So that was the concept. But, you know, not everyone likes my music. But for me, I, I love, I find it catchy. But I've really improved the quality of my music. So this this year, you know, people are going to be very surprised um, by the sounds, the style, and also the singing, and also the Korean. You know, I feature a lot more Korean in my new song, and the pronunciation is 100% spot on. Uh, I had my Korean coach uh, make sure of it as well, so I'm excited for everyone to see. Okay, and yes, as you told me that, so you're going to use your own real voice, like a rather than autotune, right? Right. Well, you know, it's always good to have a little bit of auto tune, yeah, like sure. all pop auto tune. Even mm-hmm. um, you know, all the big K-pop stars, they use auto tune in their songs because it gives a specific sound effect. Mm-hmm. It's not because people can't sing; it's just because it gives a specific sound. Like Britney Spears, she uses it. That's just her sound. Mm-hmm. You know. So there's loads of K-pop stars that, even in some BTS songs, obviously they're the best singers in the world. But some of their songs, they do feature auto tune because it gives a different kind of sound. So it goes with the song. You know, it's like. Um, as an example, like Idol, that's got some auto tune in it just because the sound, you know, goes with the melody, goes with the beat. So everyone uses it. So I'm not using as much, you know, as perfection. As I said, perfection was meant to have that auto tune. Mm-hmm. So I would be like a plastic doll. But, you know, my new song, it does have auto tune because of the style of the song. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it doesn't have nearly as much as perfection. Okay. I will, I will wait for that one. And, okay. Yeah. And also, I and also subscriber think that you looked good before. Like before plastic surgery, how do you think about it? But for real, uh, thank you. Well, a lot of people say that actually. They say I look, uh, you know, nice before and stuff. But you know, I never liked the way I looked before. I thought I was very ugly. I used to get bullied all the time, so I had a fat face. So I really didn't like the way I looked. But you know, I appreciate people saying that. I'm I'm much happier now. Um, you know, with my face. I think it looks much much more improved. And you know, I've still got lots of work to do. But uh, thank you guys for saying that. Okay, no worries. And. Okay, that's all. Hey. Hi, Oli. Oh, sorry. Okay, can I just take a like a screenshot of you? You're smiling. Yeah, hang on.
Yeah, sure. Wait. Okay. One, two, three. So basically, uh, after this interview, my perspectives about Ollie London is a little bit changed because, you know, media, you can just see that, you know, he's just like a prick. But now I know that he's doing his best to learn Korean. I mean, he's getting language lesson once per week and he had traumatic memories about his appearance. He got bullied by some people because of his appearance. That's one of the reasons that he had plastic surgery. But you know that what is he doing is got people's attention and especially BTS fans, I guess, because you know that, you know, it was kind of weird when someone do a marriage with fake cardboard. And of course, it, you know, it can get people's attention. Yeah, I can say that everything that he's doing is right. He, of course, something is wrong as my per perspectives and my personal opinion. Yep, so I can say that um, I, now I understand a bit of his opinion and a bit of what he's doing. So yeah, I hope you're gonna, you know, fix and change a bit, I would say, and get people's positive opinion. And also he said that you're gonna, you know, use less autotune about his music. So I will wait for your next music video, Ali. And of course, I'm going to make a reaction video of your new, new song. I hope you're gonna sing with your real voice, not autotune. So I will wait for that, Oli. And I also want to say thank you so much for Oli that he did an interview with me. Yep. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And please subscribe to my channel if you didn't and like my video. Thank you so much. Bye for now.